Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. I do have to say, Pastor, that message last night, it was one of those things for me when you talked uh, about the, the peace that shot it as our boots mm -hmm. uh, and or for our leg in protection. And it was one of those things for me where I've sat through movies before where they've gone, they were so enticing to me that it, two hours goes by and I was like 20 minutes. And it was something like that for me with, uh, with your message last night. I it wish was, it was that way with everybody <laughs> else, John. <laughs> but I even talked to my wife. She's like, it happened so fast. And, and it was just one of those applicate, those studies that was very uh, applicable to our own lives. Even the fact about the preparation is what was one of my favorite things that you talked about. And so I'm excited about as we're going more into the armor of God uh, the next few weeks. And church family, I do want to invite you, if you haven't been out to see that study, come on Wednesday nights. Matter of fact, this, uh, I think this Wednesday, we'll be taking communion. Uh, and so it's a great study. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, you can actually go back to our Facebook page or YouTube to watch it as uh, you've been doing a study on the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And it ties in with your study coming up. Mm -hmm. As you've been uh, sharing out of Mark chapter 13, this week you'll be in verses 14 to 23. And you've been, for the last couple of weeks, or including this week, teaching us about the tribulation. And, and that's something I want to just speak a little bit about today. As I was going through your notes, I was noticing that, as you've been sharing with us, as, uh, as one of the essentials of Calvary Chapel, that the, rap the rapture will happen before the tribulation. And you taught that last week and gave scriptures. And, and again, it was eye-opening, Pastor, to see what's going to be taking place in the tribulation. As you've done a, a study in Revelation uh, chapter 6 to 19, it describes it. But this is going to be a time like no before. Mm -hmm. I don't think people really truly understand or grasp how traumatic or how crazy it's going to be during this time. And I think... There's a lackadaisical, because they don't understand this, there's not a great understanding of the tribulation, there's this lackadaisical approach to walking with God, especially in these last times. Yeah. Pastor, how how bad is the tribulation going to be? Well, the, the tribulation itself is, is the greatest series of cataclysms the scripture presents to us, the greatest series of cataclysms that the world has ever seen. And if the Lord had not shown mercy, that the devastation would be complete. It would be total. The descriptions that you find uh, in, in Revelation 6 through 19 and other passages, including Old Testament books, when they begin to describe the day of the Lord and how he works. I mean, if you take those things literally, which we do, you know, if, if the Lord were not merciful, no flesh would survive, he says. And so in Revelation chapters 6 through 19, you see a series of escalating judgments that begin with the uh, trumpet judgments and conclude with the, uh, with the bowl judgments, you know, the seal rather, the seal judgments, trumpet judgments, and conclude with the bowl judgments. And the bowl judgments seem to be uh, judgments that occur in a much more rapid pace. The others are escalating and, uh, and all, but you begin to see the um, intensity of it as it's magnified and, uh, and all to the very end. And so, you know, I mean, the seas are turned into blood. The, the water sources are blood. The sun um, is uh, scorching people. They're gnawing their tongues in pain. The description is, is very, very graphic and uh, and yet in the midst of all of that they refuse to repent and they continue in their um, sinful ways which is I believe really revelatory of how deeply depraved human nature truly is I mean the fact that they are being treated in such a way and and they curse the God who's bringing this rather than repenting just demonstrates the great deception, you know, that will be transpiring during that time. And so as we look at it this upcoming Sunday, I, I'm going to take some time looking at the second half of the tribulation and its escalations and all. 
and uh, we'll have an opportunity to see a preview of the future. And that's the amazing thing because in that time, the deception is going to grow so great that the that this covenant that has been made by the Antichrist, he's going to break that covenant and it's going to take Israel by surprise. Or oh, Israel yeah. By surprise. oh, yeah, yeah. And this will now start the Great Tribulation. Yeah, the, the Tribulation appears to be divided into two segments. The first three and a half years are referred to as Tribulation. But then Jesus uh, speaks of, and then there shall be great tribulation the world has never seen and will never see again. So that's the escalation, and that seems to be fitting in with, uh, with the latter judgments in concluding with the, uh, with the bowl judgments and all. So yeah, it, uh, it is a, a time that, that has never been seen on the earth. It'll be a time that... Uh, actually concludes with the return of Jesus Christ and uh, the final battle there in Armageddon and, and the destruction of, of uh, the evil that has been uh, ruling and, and running roughshod over, over humanity for that period of time. So it's a very, it, it's a very eye-opening portion of scripture that we'll be looking at this upcoming Sunday. And real. Well, that's yeah. It's uh, there have been people attempting over the years to illustrate it, you know, with with books and paintings and movies. But um, the reality of it is much more stark than anything I think I could portray with words. Just the idea of mankind being devastated in progressive waves, you know, and multiple thousands of people dying. Um, throughout the time. I didn't even really do a full synopsis of it. I just concentrate on just a certain portion of it. But when we went through the book of Revelation uh, a, while, a while back, you know, when you begin to see the judgment of fourths and thirds and, and the, you know, Earth's population being destroyed and destroyed, you know, it gives you an idea of how thorough the cleansing and purging and judgment will be. You know, the God that we worship, Many people look at him simply from one of his facets or one of his revelations of himself. So we see him as a God of mercy. And yet the Bible speaks also that he is a God of judgment, a God of wrath. And uh, that's, a, that's a, a, a picture that we don't really see portrayed very often, especially in today's church where where because people don't have a healthy fear of God, they don't, they really, many don't, John. That's, that's what lends itself to some of the petty debates that we first world Christians have. Oh, is it okay to drink? Is it okay to do this or to do that? It's like, where's the line drawn so that I can continue being carnal and still get into heaven? Rather than hating sin, departing from evil and turning to Christ and making a difference. And I think people need to really think that through, that God, God is not a God who, who is, um, you know, he's not kidding when he says these things are going to happen. I'm going to pour my wrath out on a Christ-rejecting world. I'm telling you that this shoddy understanding of grace has undermined the uh, effectiveness of the church because there are quite a number of people, I even mentioned this perhaps a bit last night, who are such terrible witnesses of the grace of God that uh, people, uh, people don't even listen. They have no credibility. And I was mentioning just last night how um, somebody says, well, you shouldn't be smoking pot as they're drinking. And it makes no sense. It didn't make sense when I got saved 50 plus years ago. It didn't make sense now to try and tell me that I can exercise certain quote unquote freedoms to uh, satisfy the desires of my flesh and yet be effective in preaching the gospel to others. People are not understanding that when, when you really come into connection with God, your life changes, you know, and God is holy. He's completely separate from evil. There is not a, a hint of darkness in him, John says. God is light, and there's no darkness in him at all. When people don't understand that his separation, his holiness, his purity is what we're supposed to be reflecting um, when they don't understand that, then what they do is they dilute the gospel and they reduce its promise of transformation because they're not experiencing that themselves. And so 
here, here we are living in a period when it's real obvious that the, the pages of the book are coming to its conclusion. It's very, it's very uh, probable that this will happen within um, n not too distant future because we're seeing things as they're unfolding. We're seeing the, uh, the situation in the Middle East. We're seeing Iran, Iraq. We're seeing Russia. We're seeing these, these participants in Ezekiel 38 and 39, and we, we're seeing that now. And, and yet the church is still arguing over things that really don't matter. And calling people like me, you know, a judge because I'm encouraging them to, to forsake the things that that um, that that will cause them to not have effective ministry or a joy-filled life. That pastors like me and others like me are are not regarded that well anymore. And and you know what? Um, that doesn't mean we don't stand on the rooftop and call the people to to the Lord. It just means that that's how hard hearts have become. But there's still a way out for those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It's the only way out. Right. That's the only way out. And there's still time. And even for Absolutely. Those who are watching, Absolutely. They want to give their lives to Christ. And yes. Now's the time. Now's the time. And uh, because, like you said, Pastor, we're right at the end. Mm -hmm. I like what you said. We'll, we'll close with this. You said, if we can't live for Christ a day in the church age, how can we live through for Christ in the tribulation? Yeah, there have been people who have said in my lifetime, I mean, in my, my life experience, you know, well, I'd like to see what the tribulation is like, and then at that point I'll give my heart to Christ. And the response has always been, if you can't live for Christ when it's easy, what makes you think you'll live for him when it's hard? <laughs> come Sunday, church family, to come hear this message. Uh, and again, there may be some that are watching this afternoon who have never given their life to Christ. Open your heart to Christ. Amen. Uh, and, and, and the promise of eternal life, but even greater, Pastor, to be with Jesus. Yeah, turn from your sins, repent, confess to Christ, say, God, I need you, forgive me, and open your heart to him. Amen. So we do invite you to come on out. If you did say that prayer, contact our church office or come on in. Uh, we have some resources we'd love to give you. Uh, come on out to our services at 830, 1045 for everybody. Invite your friends and family to come on out. Pastor, thank you so much for this And this time. Sunday we're going to have our community oh, yes. wedding That's and right. second service. For those of you who are part of our fellowship, we have had people in the church who have been living out of wedlock together. It's been in sin. They've repented, and we're going to perform uh, a ceremony for uh, several of them yes. this upcoming Sunday after second service. It'll be great. So come check that out, uh, a demonstration of God's amazing grace. His grace. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.